Vaughn coming to you from my in-home studio. I am so exhausted. <laughs> I spent a lot of time this week organizing the classroom at school and trying to get everything situated for um, art that was completed this school year to go home with you. And I just, I miss you guys so much. It's been a week filled of happy emotions and sad emotions and I am really looking forward to getting to see you guys and getting to work with you uh, virtually through these videos. And this week is really exciting because second, third, fourth, and fifth, you guys have options. This is option number one. This is uh, a little bit more challenging of an option just because of following numbers and things like that in the pattern to create our loom. For those of you who don't know what this is, this is a weaving uh, on a plate and it is mixed media. So we also paint and do things like um, that. And I'm gonna show you how you're gonna make your very own plate weaving just like this or circle weaving. You will need a plate and this is very important for your plates. If you have a paper plate and there is no shine or sheen to your plate, you may use markers, color pencils, crayons, sharpies, most anything that you have, watercolor, you can use most anything on a traditional paper plate. But Miss Vaughn, like a lot of people, have paper plates that have this shiny finish to it. And when I have something like this, those materials aren't necessarily going to paint or go on top of this and stick. So you will need, if you have a shiny plate, you will need acrylic paint or you will need Sharpies. Either one, either option works just fine. I'm gonna end up using paint and Sharpie on mine. So let's get started on the design. First things first, you are going to actually turn this into a loom. And a loom is kind of like a warp. For those of you who are thinking of paper weaving, that skeleton, that structure that holds your weaving together, that's super important. And this is a tool for us to get to where we can create our warp but this is actually called a circle loom, all right? And we're actually going to make 19 notches around the edge of our piece of plate. And because 19 is an odd number, that makes it a little bit more challenging. So let's take a look. You're gonna use your Sharpie at the very tippy top. And I'm gonna make a tick mark. Okay. And then if I were to follow this line all the way down my plate, like so, it's an odd number. So this is actually not going to be a post. So I have to put a tick mark to the right and to the left of that place. So if I have three marks on my plate and I need a total of 19, how many more tick marks should I make? 16. So if I divide 16 in half, I'm gonna have eight on one side and eight on the other. So one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right? They don't have to be perfectly spaced out, but it certainly helps. And no worries, just do your best, okay? Now I need eight on this side, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. 
that should give me a total of 19 tick marks all the way around. And I'm actually gonna count them first, starting at one, putting my thumb down, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Now I'm going to number them on the flat part of the plate. All right, so there's all of my nineteen pieces. And to make my loom super easy to put our warp on, we're actually going to cut out these little tick marks by cutting out a triangle. So I'm gonna go in towards the middle and I'm gonna move my scissors and go in towards the middle on the opposite direction, okay? Think of like a TP or the capital letter A. So I'm going to cut and rotate my plate a little bit and cut. And most of the time I'm gonna to have to wiggle, wiggle, pull. And then I have that capital A on my plate. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that all the way around my plate. For those of you who are looking this way. Uh, right there, do you see that little cutout? So now I'm gonna go all the way around and make sure all of those 19 tick marks have these little triangle cuts out. All right, so all of my numbers have a little cut out triangle above them. I should have 19 in total, which is super fantastic. And now it is time for me to paint a circular design on the base of my plate. So this one is double layered of a paint design. And so we're just gonna do the basic paint job first. Remember when you're switching colors of acrylic paint, you know, make sure that you completely clean out your patty before you dip into another color. paint is already activated and you don't need to add any water to it. I'm choosing to paint with yellow on my outside because I want to see my numbers and yellow will act like a highlighter and I'll still be able to see through the paint. I'm gonna work from the outside in and get as close as I can to that previous color without mixing paints. Or I could always let it dry and then wait for your next color. An easy way to let your plate dry is to take it outside um, in the beautiful sun, or you can always fan your plate, keep yourself cool, and let the paint dry. All right, so for the next step, I'm actually going to be painting some of my second layer, my more detailed pieces. So I'm gonna do some stripes on here and touch up some of the paint of my first layer if I need to do that. All right guys, so on the classroom website, I have um, a screenshot of the lesson plan. And so it has step-by-step -step instructions on there for you. So the plate design that is my example obviously has the top coat finished. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and work on my top coat on my own to get it to that elevated, exciting, confetti-like level that the others are. All right, so now I'm gonna let this dry, and while I let it dry, I'm gonna start thinking about what color yarn 
I want for my warp. And my warp is going to be the pieces of yarn that are the skeleton of my weaving. It holds everything together and makes sure that they don't come apart. So if I'm looking at this example, this is my blue and white kind of twisty pieces. It's almost like the burst of the sun. Um, here's the back for you to kind of investigate before I teach you how we uh, go ahead and load our loom with our warp. You're first going to choose your color of yarn for that warp. And honestly, this time, because I get to make two, I'm going to use this. I love this color. It's kind of the center of the blue color I used in the middle of my plate. And you're going to want quite a bit of this. So I always measure the length of my arm. I hold it like I'm cuddling my stuffed animal or my animal at night. It's all the way to the edge. I'm going to do this three times because I think that will give me enough. Okay. For my second graders, I would probably do them as long as your arms can go. And I do that three times. Okay. That's going to give you enough yarn for sure. Use a pair of scissors, cut your yarn, put this bad boy away. For now, you may choose to use them again later. And you are also going to need tape. And I don't know if I said that earlier, but you will need some tape. And you are going to find number one on your plate right here. Flip them over. And you want to tape your yarn on the back of your plate near the number one. part um, of your loom. So I'm going to actually flip my plate over with it going through that niche I cut out and it should be over one. So let's explain the numbers that I have on our lesson plan. This is a cheat sheet for weaving. There's going to be a pattern as you weave. Okay. And the pattern has to do with our numbers. So if I'm looking at my page, it says you're going to go under the plate at one, which we have done. And then we're going to cross the top of the plate to number 10. So here's my number 10 um, notch. I'm going to go across from one to 10. Then I'm going to go under the plate to 11. And I'm going to go across the plate to number two. When I do that, I make a really tiny X. Okay. Because my yarn is far away from me, I'm going to turn my plate to where the yarn is close to my belly. That's going to help you keep going over this pattern over and over again. So keep the yarn closest to you. So my next number is going to go under three across to 12, pull it around towards your belly. You're going to go under to 13, across to four, pull it all the way to where it's close to your belly. We're going to go under five, across to 14, turn it around towards you. We're going to go under 15, Oops, I didn't get it all the way to my belly. Under 14. I'm sorry. This one can't count. Under 15. Across to 6. Bring it towards my belly. Under 7. Across to 16. Twist it. Under 17. Across to eight, turn it to where it's closest to your belly. Nine, across to 18. OK, 
Okay. And then we're actually going to go under 19 as our last number combination. Okay. Now, as you may notice, 19 doesn't go towards the middle. So what my suggestion is, is to take the end of your yarn. We're going to go under all of them. And we're going to kind of go towards the other side of the plate. And we're just going to bring it back to 19. And this allows us to kind of bring that center of our loom or our warp to the center of your plate, okay? Now, after you do that, we're gonna let the rest of the painting kind of dry and I will see you for part two on how we're gonna start weaving our warp and make sure our loom is completely dry. How does that sound? Awesome. I am because I am going to go run an errand. I have to go to the grocery store. I'm going to tape my yarn down on my table so that it kind of keeps that pulled tight. And I am going to put a little bit of tape on my plate and make sure my tape is long enough to kind of tape it down to the table so it doesn't move. Okay, and then that way when I come back, hopefully I'll be right here where it is, okay? Next time I see you, we're gonna be weaving from the center out, which is super exciting. We'll also get to do the final touches of our paint job. I hope you guys are looking forward to finishing these. I think they're really fun. This is the hardest part that we just did, is getting our warp kind of situated. So if you can get through this, the rest will be a breeze. If you do not have yarn, I suggest that you find some string or ask a parent for a really old t-shirt and you can cut them up into strips and use that too. Uh, surely there's something in the house that we can use for the weaving process. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Should I make these into my next earrings? I can make my own pom-pom ball earrings. Should I do that? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> you soon.